फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट देयर इज हाव एवर वन रेकमेंडेशन ऑफ द प्रेस कमीशन विच सीम्स टू हैव बीन ओमिटेड वेन मेकिंग द प्रोविजन्स ऑफ दिस बिल द कमीशन हैड सेट दैट ऑन द काउंसिल रिप्रजेंटेशन मस्ट बी गिवन टू द पीरियोडिकल प्रेस ऑल्सो दैट इज द वीकलीज एंड अदर्स आई फाइंड दैट ओमिशन हेयर आई फील दैट इन आवर न्यूज पेपर वर्ल्ड दीज पीरियोडिकल्स these monthlies fortnightlies and weeklies do play an important part especially in molding public opinion and in the dissemination of knowledge therefore i think that the recommendation of the press commission that some representation ought to be given to the periodical press also must be considered in this connection it seems to have been omitted here that is what i have to say at this stage regarding the composition of the council next i come to clause 14 of this bill which is a very vital clause i was happy to listen to the honorable minister when he stated that it is the accepted canon of journalistic conduct not to disclose the source of information if you go through the history of journalism in india you will find that our top men in the newspaper world had refused to divulge the source of information and they had to suffer for it and because of such suffering the prestige and self respect of the profession have been very much heightened no journalist worth his salt would disclose the source of his information not because he is so anxious to keep his own self respect but because he knows that it is vital for the profession as a whole if you want an independent press if you want your newspapers to play their part in the field of public opinion if you ask them to disclose the source of their information then the very spring of independent journalism would be touched and that is not a desirable thing the honorable minister has himself explained that point and therefore i need not labor that point any more i however find that clause 14 expressly lays down that the council has the power of requiring discovery and production of documents if you call upon a correspondent or the owner of a paper or a publisher in many cases it would be impossible to withhold the source of information you cannot withhold the source of information and at the same time discover and produce the documents we have given notice of an amendment even if you want to continue the existing provision you could provide for an exception saying that the journalists must not be required to disclose the source of information it is not a question of just the newspaper people and the public being apprehensive over these things here is a provision which has been expressly put there of course you can see that eminent journalists will be there on the council that we can expect the leaders of the newspaper world who can be expected to be elected to this council to pay proper heed to the professional standards but it will be better if you were to put an express provision in the bill itself now the newspapers reflect political opinion of the country and there are bound to be sharp differences and however much we may try it may not be always possible to keep within the limits by this provision you are giving them a handle to force an unwitting journalist or somebody holding a different view to disclose the source of information that is not called for coming to the other general powers of the press council it is true 
as mentioned by the honorable minister himself that the powers granted to this body are far more and go far beyond the powers granted to the british press council in the particular statute i quite follow that the penal provisions therein have not been called to use as the minister himself made it clear it is just a sanction the body to be created will enable the profession and the industry to regulate themselves it is some short of a voluntary thing which is there a sanction will have its own way but then there is this power to summon witnesses and as i have already mentioned requiring them to produce documents and other things when you give all these powers at least some of us feel that in the present setup in our country these powers are a little excessive they are not called for in the present conditions existing in our newspaper world some of these powers have not been found necessary to be given to the british press council even and yet we are investing our press council with such powers it will be a rather hasty experiment to make in entrusting our press council with these things the question of censor is there after all we want our journalists and our newspaper men to voluntarily enforce our conduct and try to improve their standards of journalism which will always be in their own interest stop